Hey what's up guys Yankee here and in this video we will be building our very own chat application using Streamlit, Olama and Langchain. So this is how our application is going to look like. This is the application header. We will also have a UI to select uh, all the models that are available in our computer. We also have this section where you see all the chat history, chat messages. Uh, we've got this icon for the AI message and it has the initial message how can I help you and we can add a prompt to it right write an ashe on himalayan goat and it streams all the messages on your chat window so this is all running locally on your machine without your data going to any central server so this is the perfect tool you can build to learn how we can work with large language models first of all make sure you have olama installed on your computer you can go to olama.dev and download olama for your platform you can go to the model section and download one of the lightweight models for this video for this maybe you can use llama 3.2 1 billion parameter you can select 1 billion from the drop down copy from here come to your terminal and just paste it and it will download the model on your computer to check if the download is successful run olama list and it should be listed there so without any further ado let's get started let's create a application directory called chat app so i'm going to go into chat app let's create a virtual environment for our application so i'm going to do python 3 minus m v e n v and i'm going to name my virtual environment as dot v e n v once you have your virtual environment created you can activate it source dot v e n v bin and activate now let's install our dependencies so we have our first dependency as langchain with olama and then streamlit once we have these dependencies installed we are going to check if they are there so pip list all of them are there now i'm going to open a code editor for me it's going to be vs code here i'm going to create a file called app.py which is going to be the main entry point for our application and let's start by importing streamlit as st that is the convention first and foremost we can set our application header so we can do st.header so it can be chat application and to run our application we can come to the terminal and write streamlet run app.py and it's going to open the application and here we can see the header being displayed right now the name of the page title is app which is the name of our module so we are going to change that let's do st.page config and i'm going to do page title it's going to be application chat application there are some neat things you can do with streamlit headers or wherever you're writing you know text so for that uh, let's see i want to make application as blue so i'll do blue and i can wrap the application in square brackets if i save and refresh this is going to be blue so if you go to streamlit markdown section uh, on the body you can see all the text transformation that you can do now let's move on to creating our first chat message uh, that is greetings from the ai so we are going to write st dot chat message and there are two roles that you can uh, choose for the chat message it's either ai or assistant they are on the same category or human or user so for this i'm going to choose ai and i'm going to write hello how can i help you so this is going to be the initial message that the ai will show us when we open the application if we save this and if we refresh the page streamlit already gives us this nice um, robot avatar along with the messages that we see uh, if we want to emulate something that the user has typed we can do chat uh, messages and we can do human or user either is fine so i'm going to do user dot write how are you so this is all manual at the moment but uh, i think you can already see whenever the user adds a prompt we are going to pass that to this line so this line has to be dynamic Having said that let's take the user input as well for that we are going to use chat input and for the placeholder we are going to write add your prompt uh, if i can spell prompt okay prompt and this is going to show us this nice uh, prompt box where you can write your prompt so for now if i write anything it's not going to do because we are we are not handling it so i'm going to assign it to a variable called prompt equals to this thing so once we have the prompt the next thing we need to do is pass it to the large language model and for that we are using olama from langchain olama uh, import chat olama so we are going to create an instance of a llm with chat olama class where model is going to be uh, llama 3.2 uh, i think it was 1 billion parameters so just to check 
I'm gonna write Olama list and the name has to be exact. So it's Olama 3.2 1 billion. And in my case, that's the correct one. And we can also set temperature and other variables or other modal configurations here as well. For temperature, I'm going to put 0 0.7. This basically uh, adjusts the randomness of the output that the large language model will produce. Zero means it will produce not so random text, but 0 0.7 means it can play along with creativity. So the output will be more creative. Once we have that, I'm going to check if we have prompt. And if we have prompt, we are going to finally display it on the UI uh, as user human does not matter. And I'm going to write whatever user has passed as a prompt. And once we have that, we are going to do result.invoke. So we have this chat olama instance on the llm uh, variable so we are going to invoke it sorry not result.invoke it should be llm.invoke and we are going to pass the user prompt to it and we are going to get an output out of it and once we get the output we need to display it on the ui again so it's basically chat messes then the output is from the ai so write ai write and it's going to be output so let's take this for a spin i'll refresh my application i'll say i am good how about you as you can see the user input is displayed on the screen as well and there is the robot output which is not currently displayed because output because we need to access the output dot content for it if not, it will just, yeah, as you can see, it, it outputs the JSON data and we need to grab the content. So yeah, it has all of this, you know, what model we are using when we created it, uh, what type of role it's playing, uh, what's the total duration, um, all of these metadata you can get from here. But in our case, we want just the output, so output.content. So let's try that one more time. I am good. What about you? And it's going to display the message but as you notice it's not streaming the response like we would want to because streaming response looks very nice uh for that what we are going to do is we are going to do uh, we are going to use a context manager with st.chat message ai and i'm going to add a colon here and streamlet uh right stream so stream lot so streamlet provides us with this method called write stream where we can stream a generator like object so for that we are going to remove output.content and instead of llm.invoke we are going to do llm.stream so that its output is a iterator right so once we have that we are going to stream the output to the ui so it looks nice and pretty like all of the other chat uis out there let's refresh this hello how can i help you you can't for now as you can see, it's streaming the response, which looks very nice and pretty. Let's ask for something. So write a poem on a bright blue sky. As you can see, the application is overwriting our current UI. So it's not like it does not have a linear chat history. So if I write something, hi, it's going to overwrite everything. But we want to maintain a chat history, right? And for that, we are going to use Streamlet's built-in state management, which is called uh, session data. The thing about session data is that whenever you are starting an application, you need to set the session data. Else, if you're trying to access it later on, uh, you run into errors. If chat history, we are going to name our state chat history, not in st.session state. Then we are going to set a default chat history, which is going to be uh, st.session state and chat history. So it's basically a dictionary, the session state. And we are going to put a list with a bunch of messages. So our default message is, um, hello, how can I help you? Right. Um, the benefit of using Langchain is that it provides us with some of the wrappers uh, where you can neatly wrap all of these AI messages, human messages and system prompts. For that, I'm going to use from Langchain core dot, I think it's called prompts, uh, no messages, import human messages and AI messages. So uh, instead of writing this line uh, with AI, I can write AI messages and I can indicate like what message did AI write. So for that, it's going to be hello, how can I help you? 
so i'm going to paste it there and i'm going to get the chat history again from the session state so st.session state chat history so every time we write message and every time we get response from the llm we are going to store everything on the session state and we are going to render it uh, line by line on our ui so for that we are going to do for history in chat history we are going to loop through all the messages in the chat history and we are going to check if history uh, if is instance history uh, is ai messages then we are going to say st.write st.chat um, messages it's going to be ai and write going to be history.content and then if the instance is of let's say human message then we are going to sorry not this so if it's the instance of human message we are going to do uh, st.chat messages it's going to be human and we are going to write human or user does not matter it's the same so write we are going to write the content of the history okay because as you can see the first argument to ai misses is content and same with the human message as well so we are accessing whatever string we are passing to be displayed on the ui here so once we have that we have our we can remove this line now since we have state where we can store all the chat history uh whenever we get prompt from the user we can save it to the chat history what i can do is on the session state and chat history since it's a list i can add to the uh, chat history i'm going to add a human message which was the prompt sent by the user and once i do this we are also streaming the output uh to the uh, ui so i'm going to say final message for this and again on the session state chat history we are going to append the ai message which is going to be the output produced by the ai so instead of final message i'm going to do ai uh, with message right so so the recent change that we did is that we set a session state called chat history on our application and when the application starts based on streamlets best practices we need to set a default value in this case we have a ai message asking how it can help the user and then we are taking all the chat history from the session state we are looping over it and we are trying to find if the message history is of ai message or it belongs to the human message and based on that we are displaying it on the ui and then we are asking the uh, chat input to the user so one thing you need to know about streamlit is that the application runs from top to bottom so depending on how you have defined all of the streamlit's ui component it's going to render it in the same order so in our case we have the application header we have the chat history and we are rendering all the chat history uh, that we see on the screen and then followed by the chat input window or the chat input form that we have and then whatever message we find we are just going to like stream it and it's going to write back to the window so let's take this for a spin uh, i'm going to refresh my application i'm just going to write hi what can you do for me in terms of helping in code i don't know this random so yeah as you can see now we are maintaining our chat history it's not rewriting the same uh human message and ai messages and we have a very lean history so the next thing is write a python program to generate a triangle on the screen just the code and this is pretty awesome so the next part of our application is going to be selecting the large language models so right now we are using llama 3.1 1 billion parameter but we might want to use something else like Gemma. Uh, there is mistral and a lot of different open source large language models before we get to that let's organize our code into functions so it's easier on the eyes and easier to you know check out later on so i'm going to wrap everything into run the last part and uh, this is related to application initialization so i'm just going to write def uh, app session in it and this needs to be run at the beginning of the application so i'm going to put it here also we are running um, this application as a script so i'm going to add if name equals to main meaning the application is running this module directly 
then we are going to run the main entry point which is going to be run function in our case uh, once we have this we are also going to bring these here once we have this done we need a function to list all of our models that's available in olama for that i'm going to do uh, def get models and it's not going to take any argument models equals to olama dot list uh, i also need to import olama sdk which is installed when we install Langchain Olama. So this is going to give me a dictionary with a list. Uh, structure is pretty nested, but yeah, let's continue. If we don't have any models, we are going to print uh, no models found. Please visit olama.dev slash models, right? And we are also going to do uh, import sys and if it does not find we are going to exit with error code one meaning we need models to continue with our application once that is done we can create a variable called models list which is going to be an empty list for now and for model in models and it's a dictionary and the key is models and we are going to do model list dot append and whatever model we have model and the name and we are going to return models list so once we have done that we also need to show on the ui a section or drop down to select the models so for that we are going to use something called select box and it's going to say select llm model large language model so it's already and it's going to call the function get models to get the list of all the models and the key is going to be selected model uh, selected model so whenever we have key and whenever something is selected on this ui it's automatically going to set this key uh, on the session state so we can grab it and do whatever we want with it so in our case since it's going to end up in the session state uh, we want to manipulate it later on so what i'm going to do is if selected model uh, not in session state then i'm going to session state selected model and it's going to call uh, get models and it's going to get the first item from the output and it's going to set it as the default model having done that we can also do i'm going to copy this basically uh, if we come down here we are selecting llama 3.2 so i'll do I'll create a variable called selected model here and set it as the session state and i'm also going to print selected model is going to be like this so we can see like what model we are working with and also we can set the same variable here so the selected model is always dynamic now once we have done that let's see if we can select different ai models and work with them i'm going to open my terminal selected model is llama 3.21b because that is the first uh, entry point I'm going to say who built you. I'm going to copy this because I'm going to ask the same question to the next model. So yeah, Llama 3 was developed by Meta. I'm going to select Gemma. So this is developed by Google. So it should say it is developed by Google. Yeah, that's correct. So we are using different LLMs on the same chat window. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this tutorial was really helpful. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you have any queries or comments or if you are stuck in something, you can mention it on the comment section below or you can DM me on Twitter. Or Yeah, that's it. Bye-bye.